Welcome back guys. It's time for the automatic transfer switches once again. And today we need to answer a couple of more questions. Question number one. How long does it take to switch between the contactors? Will it kill your computer or not? How does it look? Secondly, if you're using your grid tie inverter or your grid off-grid inverter or whatever type of inverter you have with a loadout, if you switch between the grid and that load, how will that look like for the user? And lastly, I have a little bit of a bonus question or bonus answer and that is we will take a look at the MPP solar system and see does the load output synchronize to the grid itself or not. Because if it doesn't synchronize you could potentially end up within 10 milliseconds seconds, a very very big spike. First of all let's take a look at the ATS and see how long time does it take to switch from one to the other. The system is hooked up here. I have the input here that I have hooked up to both sides. So what I'm going to measure it is how long time are we without the power. And that is how long time does it take to switch between one to the other. So basically we have one active now and when I switch you can see that it switches between the contactors. So what we need to figure out today is how long time does it take to actually go from one to another. And to do that I'm going to measure the current that goes through. And I'm going to measure this with, with the AC directly, so let's hook that up. As you can see on the screen here, we have a perfect curve. This is 50 Hz. So basically we have the curve here and we want to measure when we switch. If I switch this here, you may see the flicker. But we need to catch that. So let's zoom out a little bit. I know that this can be done with a trigger. But I'm going to do it like this instead. I have 200 milliseconds between each one of them. So as soon as I have caught one, I will stop. So I have now caught one of the switches in the middle here. So let's take a look at this. This was the first one. We will do it one more time so you see that this is not a coincidence. And we'll do it the other way around. Because now I switch one way. So basically, per square here, we have 5 milliseconds. And we can see that it switches off there and it switched on roughly there. So between those we have 5, 10 and I would say around 12 milliseconds. So basically it took 12 milliseconds to switch and you will get a little bit of flicker in, in the middle itself. So let's try this again and we'll see how it behaves. So there we have another one. We have it the same here, you get some kind of flicker and noise here, and that's because of the switching out. We have 5 and roughly 9 milliseconds. So the switch takes somewhere between 9 and 12 milliseconds in general. I have tested this at least 5-6 times to see that the, the behavior is somewhat co consistent, and it is. It takes roughly 1 going up and down roughly 10 milliseconds to actually do the switch. And that's really really good. That means the switch here can actually keep the computers alive. But at the same time beware of the spikes that can be introduced. I must say that I'm pretty happy with that test because it took around 10 milliseconds to do the switch and that's pretty good. So next thing we're going to check out is actually the MPP solar system and see what happens there. If we switch between grid and the solar system. I have now hooked up the oscilloscope to the inverter in question and I'm monitoring incoming grid on one and outgoing from the inverter on the second one. So let me rig you up and you can see what happened when I switch now. If we take a look at them and we move them a little bit uh, round, you can see that if I shut them off you see one or the other. Let me mo move this one to the side. So basically if you see if I lift one of them up you will see that they are in phase. So what will happen if I disconnect the grid from the inverter and this is the interesting part. 
Now I disconnected it, and as you see, the light flickered, and that's because the inverter switched off the grid, and that causes a spike on the system. So let me align those up again with each other. So what we see here now is that the inverter, that is number 2, keeps steady 50 Hz. Meanwhile, the grid itself will flicker around a little bit depending on what's going on. And you also see it in this curve here that it moves a little bit back and forth. And this highly depends on the load on the grid. As you can see now, they drift away again on the other way. And this is the reason that automatic transfer switches can cause issues when you are switching between an inverter and uh, the grid itself. Because if they are fully misaligned with each other, you could get a big spike. So if we wait a little bit and let this drift away, what will happen when we engage the grid tie inverter again? So let's do that. It's aligned, and as you can see, the graph directly switched to the side, and that is due to the inverter actually aligned itself with the grid. And it does that very, very, very quickly. And the flicker once again was when the inverter switched from the battery to the grid tied system itself. It, sw it switches back and forth when doing that. So, next phase is actually take a look at how does it look when it does that switching. And to do that, we should zoom out a little bit. I'm running 200 milliseconds per square, and that should give me a couple of seconds to stop this when doing the switch. And we start by switching off. And there it came. So let's take a look at this. And that's what will happen when the inverter synchronizes to the grid again. It takes one of the curves and just fades it down until it goes down to zero and starts it again on the next phase. So that's really, really pretty because, I mean, it do leave the stuff without power for a short while and then switches on. And that is what will happen if you use an SSR relay for switching, for instance, because that one will not shut down until it actually reaches the zero. So that part was happened here. So basically, guy, can we add an automatic transfer switch before the MPP Solar product and switch the house between the load and the grid? Yes, we can. Due to the fact that the system actually does grid synchronization, this system has no problem switching and we won't get the spike between the systems. As long as the system is actually calibrating against the grid, that's fine. So switching from the solar to the grid should always be no issue at all. As long as we have a delay when we switch from grid back to solar again. Because it takes a couple of seconds for the MPP solar unit to actually do the synchronization and everything. So basically, when you're using the ATS that I have here, you should consider attaching some kind of timer or delay for the switch part when switching back. If you do that, your gear should be safe, or at least that's how I interpret it. I hope you enjoyed this video and hope you learned something about the ATS system and the inverter in question. What I learned today was that what I believed were an inverter that actually synchronized with the grid and that was true. And that's really really good because when you are switching between the grid and the inverter you want it to be synchronized to actually perform proper against your equipment. Even though you break the signal or the power for 10 milliseconds that's not a big problem and most devices will cope with that. You did see that my light actually flickered when doing so and that is very very common in this type of lightning that I have on top here. Computers on the other hand will most of the time not happen anything to. On the other hand computers is most of the time not affected. I do not say for sure that it will work on all the systems because that may not be the case. 
but on my system so far it has been working great. When it comes to the inverter that I have here, I just got a reply back from Peggy and her team and they said that you are not allowed to switch this inverter in or out via the ATS with only three pole system. You need to have a system that actually switches the neutral as well. Because if you connect the neutral on the load out with the AC in together, the inverter itself will give an error. So I need to find something to replace the things that I already bought. There is one thing that I know I have mentioned a couple of times. Imagine that the inverter does not synchronize with the grid. What could potentially happen is that you go from minus 110 volt in my case to plus 110 volt if you are looking between neutral and phase. But if we are looking between phase and phase, you may go between minus 300 and plus 300 and then you may break the equipment and that's when it actually is very very important with the inverter to synchronize with the grid. So once again guys, I hope this was something good for some of you all out there. I did learn something today in this video. Unfortunately I do not know everything that I do want to know. So I will read up on this and hopefully with some luck I will come back in the future with more information regarding the ATS and how we should handle this. Once again guys, thank you for your support and I'll see you next time. Bye!